There we go. Ah. What? <laughs> what? Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. Check out our new logo. It's pretty cool, right? Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yay. We can put that on t-shirts. What? I know. I think that's a good idea. That's insane. We should definitely uh, do that. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And we're here to paint some Star Wars Legion. We are. Yeah. We hope uh, everybody who had a chance to see the uh, replay of the re pre-recorded right. show uh, from... Last we Thursday. Filmed, filmed last Thursday with Drew. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing that today. You got all of his thoughts on painting white and stormtroopers and all uh, sorts of stuff. I, I mean, I got some we'll good about knowledge of out of it. Yep. And uh, speaking of painting stormtroopers, which we are painting, we're continuing to paint the stormtroopers uh, from Star Wars Legion from the core box set here. Yep. Um, have you seen Terry... Uh, I, I'm, Terry Latorco? Latorco's last video, of, uh, her dry brush video on Stormtroopers. I have not seen it. It is so good. Yeah. So uh, she took the Star Wars Legion Stormtroopers, primed them black, Yep. dry brushed them with gray, Yep. then dry brushed them with white, and then uh, went back and then, you know, yeah, did the, the, the highlight, the, the larger armor areas with a better coat of white. Okay. Yep. Took her about 15 minutes per miniature. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yep. She's good. Yeah, she's good. She knows what she's doing. For sure. Terry's uh, always done some cool stuff. Some great, uh, yeah, great looking miniatures, quick, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic. And she's really good at describing what she's doing. And um, that, Yeah. And it's great enthusiasm about it as well, which is cool. Um, one of my favorite sort of quotes from Terry is something I overheard at the Simon Expo last year. Okay. And it was um, somebody said to her, Oh, what's your favorite color? All right. And she said, Done. Done is my favorite color. <laughs> As in, D not D U N, but D O N E. Yeah, just done painting. Finished. <laughs> Finished is her favorite color. <laughs> that is awesome. So, uh, yeah, I always like to. Uh, to point that one out, we we're good. I I tried to talk Johnny into getting it so we could bring her in on camera. Yeah, but uh, we got a lot a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Oh my god! Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it happens sometimes. I, I, it's been a long time since I, I <laughs> dropped a dropped a word. We got you know we got Toy Fair coming up this weekend. Yep. Um, which is gonna be a, pretty interesting. And then uh, right after that, we're like getting ready. For Gamma. For Gamma, yeah. yeah. Everything's happening very quickly. Yeah. It's going to be a busy year. But, uh, What's that? Whoa! They're in the box. There we go. All right. Now you can see us even better. <laughs> ha ha ha! <laughs> yeah. That's, ter that's terrible that we'd subject people to that. All right. But What's now? up, Mel? New logo, who dis? That's coming, <laughs> that's coming from uh, uh, Josh over at Mini Painting Studio. Yeah, excellent. Hey, Josh. Uh, as you can tell on the rotator, we've got some of the stormtroopers that were painted from last episode. Yep. They, uh, like like uh, Dave said, it was the pre-record that aired just before coming on live here. You can check those guys out. So we have... Um, so there we've got uh, the... Commander that was um, painted by myself and the oh I think DLT nineteen heavy blaster the heavy blaster guy, guy. <laughs> heavy blaster guy is much easier to say yeah uh, it was painted by Drew so uh, with those two we both also managed to paint another guy so put one there nice. I've got one here so pretty good we're happy with that two in a in a session. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now the trick is to paint a few more. I think we're also going to talk about um, basing this episode, how we're going to base our models. And yeah, well, we got some uh, some tufts. Yeah, we picked up some tufts from uh, the army painter. Mm hmm And we'll, t we'll take a look at those, but we'll talk about the colors that we're using and a few sort of thoughts on that. Yeah. And I just want to say hi to everybody. That's and uh, again, as we always ask, please share us uh, so we can get it out there to all the 
other folks that might find interest in the new Star Wars Legion and learn some new painting techniques yep. from Dave. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, how long should I say, that pre-recorded show was my first time mm -hmm. so as, as kind of solo host. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of weird. You rocked it, man. Yeah? You think so? Yeah, I do. That's good. You guys the, didn't have... The boss thinks that. So. You guys had very little dead air. That's good. Which is perfect. And and you were very informative. Yeah. And you had our tagline. And you talked about go to your local game store and all <laughs> that stuff, which are, like, super important. Were we mildly entertaining, though? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Just mildly. Mildly, but mostly <laughs> when Johnny would talk. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's when the, the fun was injected. Yeah. With your yeah. guys' uh, uh, talking about, you know... How you all have a cornucopia of worthless knowledge in your brain pans. All right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I was very, very scared about that. You did fine. I had the fears. The fears. Yeah. So I saw you put some pictures up on your Facebook page yesterday. I oh, think you even I? put it in the Pan Ampula Minis group of a prize you won. Oh. What was that? What was that? Yeah. The uh, prize that I won? Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. Uh, late, oh well, no, I guess, probably late summer or early fall last year, I uh, entered, I, I bought a couple of raffle tickets. Okay. Bought a few raffle tickets um, uh, for a charity called uh, Poppy's Angels. Okay. Who are in the UK. And it's a group of people who have been running charity auctions for, uh, not auctions, but charity raffles for the last few years, uh, raise money for various uh, kids and their families who are suffering uh, from sort of medical conditions. Okay. So it's to help um, families through the, the like costs, tough the financial group. costs, that sort okay. of thing. Um, but it's, uh, it also has built a great community of, of caring for um for these kids as well, nice. Um, and everybody gets updates as to how the kids are doing now and what's okay. sort of what's happening. And the the parents have another place to share and talk and get and talk and get support. Good, which is great. So that's uh, Poppy's Angels, but uh, they ran this big uh, sort of special raffle last year, and uh, a master painter from the UK, Tommy Soul, uh, had painted up a. Reva Titan, which is a huge it's a thing. beast Probably of a looking this, machine. Yeah, this tall sort of uh, model from mm -hmm. uh, Forge World. And it's very cool to use in the game uh, in 40K or in 30K or that sort of thing. And um, yeah, I, I managed to win it. It was nice. It was looking. like completely, completely random. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, piece for sure. That's awesome. Well, one of the things, a lot of you who have watched us and are, are regulars, like James, who just boom powed into the freaking chat, oh. uh, you know, he, uh, <laughs> Dave here is very big about, you know, charity and doing charitable works in your community and abroad, helping others uh, who may be less fortunate or having, uh, like you said, medical issues and yep. all that stuff. So, on that note, I, th I feel like we should probably come up with something. For later this year, I think we should, and uh, do a charity to, uh, to for a do something to provide something mm -hmm. for charity. Yeah, for get sure. get Jeff Hall, get Drew Carrington, uh, oh. you. Mm -hmm. I'll paint something. Sadly, mm -hmm. I apologize in <laughs> advance to all of you. Out that there. would be the most treasured piece because <laughs> it'll just be one piece. It would be one. <laughs> it would be one piece. It would be, be one, one, one thing. Piece. <laughs> uh, and we we'll and we should do a little charity. Um, you know, we'll pick a charity. Maybe put a poll up in the in the group. Yep. Uh, so if you're watching and you're not part of the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, go join up there because I think if we put a poll in there uh, and have it where you can add a charity and if whatever charity gets the highest. Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll talk about, you and I will talk about it oh, yeah. and we'll work out some of the, the different, the different pieces and the minutia. Um, make sure they're all okay as well with sort of legalities and so on. Sure. Uh, all those words. All those words. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely. I think we should definitely do that. It'd be, uh, be great. It's one of those things where, um, as you know, I've painted a lot of toy soldiers over the years. A few, yeah. And so when I get the opportunity to paint some more that can help raise raise funds to help other people, mm -hmm. that's uh, just 
bonus. Great. Just, just bonus. Yeah, just everything's everything's a bonus. Yeah, for sure. So very cool. But yeah, I was uh, I was super excited. I arrived at the house yesterday. It was in a huge um, box with lots of foam packed around it because it's uh, even though it's big, it's, it is a, a resin miniature. Mm -hmm. I say miniature, bigature. <laughs> it's a, ginormous. A huge resin model uh, and. Uh, fairly fragile. Okay. So, uh, as in, it, it's not going to take a lot of throwing around um, by baggage handlers and mm -hmm. um, mail carriers and so on. So it was um, brilliantly packed and came through with without a without a scratch, really. Yeah, so it looked very excited about amazing. that. Amazing. Came all the way from England. So. Big thank you to uh, everyone involved, uh, Tommy Soul. Stuart Tomlinson, uh, Zhang Ong, who uh, donated the, the title. Okay. Yep. Which was awesome. Uh, and yeah, everybody who sort of gets out there and does good work in their communities. Yeah. So uh, Dave, uh, James says, hey Dave, I joined the Malign Portent painting competition. Oh, cool. Excellent. What did you paint up for that? What is, what is the Malign Portents painting competition? That's a really good question. We should probably ask that too. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, it's a um, Games Workshop has a uh, sort of global campaign coming up for their Age of Sigma game. Oh, okay. And uh, it's called Malign Portents, and there is a bunch of material coming out for it. And uh, basically, the idea is, it, as with any of those sort of global campaigns, is to mm -hmm. get people excited. Um, have some focused activity, and hopefully people will paint new armies or new units for their existing armies. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's what that's about. And part of that that they're they're doing is running a uh, a painting competition. I'm guessing it's a global painting competition. Okay. Now that it's much much easier to do that kind of thing with smartphones and the internet. Right. The interwebs so, being what they are. Exactly. You can take some really nice photos with your phone. Them up. So uh, yeah, and as far as that that sort of detail goes, perhaps James can tell us a bit more about that. Uh, James says chaos, he painting chaos. Cool. Uh, Josh at Mini Painting Studios. What do you guys think about the Harry Potter miniature game coming to Kickstarter next month? They look so good. Uh, this is actually, uh, this is actually the first time hearing of it. Nice. I, I think I saw something of it on Board Game Geek or on Reddit. Today, yeah, um, but I didn't like delve into the content to figure out or look at anything for it yet. So it's it's from uh, Night Models, okay. Who did the uh, Batman? Who did the Batman? Well, the Batman game? game. Okay, yeah. So the miniatures are spectacular. All right. So they're really really nice. The fact that you enunciated like that spectacular tells me that it, they're, <laughs> that they're really gonna, good. yeah they're gonna be really good because <laughs> normally I'm like yeah it's okay yeah it's alright they're alright <laughs> they're not bad yeah I play it no they are they are very cool very cool um, the paint jobs on them that they've got for the, the models that they're showing off are of course wonderful as well right so that doesn't hurt <laughs> yeah never does <laughs> never hurts to have a good paint on your models so I apologize to that individual <laughs> that will be winning these uh, when you see that, you know, you identify which ones I painted. Yeah. What we'll do, actually, is we'll go through and paint Rick on, on the, the bottom. The very one that you painted. <laughs> so that people know. Right. And if that's the only way they can tell, how good is that? That's good. That, that would be good. So what are you doing over there? I notice you're doing a little bit of dry brushing. I, um, I'm putting the grays in there. Yeah. So I, I can come back, and I can just do the white over that okay. spot, and then hit the blacks and where they need to go. Okay. I mean, it's probably not the way anybody in the world would ever do it, yeah. but I'm just doing it that way. Okay. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Instead of doing a dry brush, you do a large brush and do a wash. Like really liquid this down? Yeah, because you, you want the grays to go into the crevices, not to sit on the top. Okay. When you dry brush... You're catching the highlights. All right. So brushing a, duck, a gray over. You yeah. see, I learned something. Got to keep my eye on him. I don't that's know. A, that's <laughs> always that's also true. You got to keep an eye on what I'm doing. 
but uh, yeah. Let's try it to like. And the important thing is always ask the question. What, what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. What do you got yeah. going on? Yeah. <laughs> when, How you you see, doing that? when you see me painting, you got to be like, what is he doing? I didn't show him that. Yeah. You said you just watched the last show. I did. Okay. But, did, you know. did you get any of his dry brush? No. No, no, no. I, you didn't. You're just super excited about Carrie's dry brushing. I was. Yeah. That's it's fair true. enough, too. I was. <laughs> I'm going to. So at the moment, I've just been going through and painting the uh, the black areas on. There's a few spots that um, you might be able to catch on the close cam here, where I've uh, accidentally splashed my black over onto the white, so I can go back and touch those up when uh, once I've got sort of uh, finished up. And once I do the white on these guys, that's when I'll uh, we'll start talking about the basing. Base. Base. <laughs> so, definitely cool. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Pick an army from the list and paint it for month one. Get the Harbinger character for month two and add an additional unit for month three. That's the contest. Okay. Cool. And you're doing chaos? I think James says he's doing chaos. chaos. James wants to know what your steps are for troopers. For troopers? Mm -hmm. uh, Stormtroopers. Yeah. Stormtroopers, these troopers? Yeah. Um, the quick and dirty explanation is uh, prime them black, give them a fairly heavy sort of zenithal prime with white, which means sort of spraying down from an angle so that you'll leave some of the, the black in the shadows underneath. Sort of in the shadows under there. Um, then we've been going through and picking out the the black area, so the undersuit, the blaster, the gloves, uh, the eye lenses, a few other areas, um, and paint those black, and then come back with uh, with white, and just paint the highlights on the white armor, and that is essentially all that. we have to do. Um, I'm not sure if you can head back to the uh, the spinner. Leona, uh, and check out the, the guys on the spinner, you'll see that essentially that's that's all that was done with those. Um, there we go. The uh, commander there has a, does have a sort of, uh, sort of his command pauldron, epaulette sort of flash area. What would you call, what would you call that? I'd Chris? call it a pauldron as well, pauldron? Okay. yeah. Uh, that's painted in uh, Vallejo red leather. I uh, haven't done any shading or highlighting on that yet. But everything else is just sort of that description. I don't think I went back with any grays on that at all. Drew might have done a sort of touched up a few grays on his, but yeah. Pretty Otherwise, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Which will mean that most of your Imperial forces can be done pretty quickly. One of the things uh, I did as well between Tuesday and today yeah. is I went away and finished off the Rebel Squad that I was working on. Nice. So I've got, so I've got those all I did see, up and see them already. They look amazing. So if we want to put some of those up on the spinner. Uh, yep, we can do that and, too. Because uh, these are the ones you're going to base, right? Oh, well, these are the ones that uh, are I, I have based these ones. Okay. And there we go. Pardon me. Uh, so yeah, based done the basing on those. That's how we're going to do it for the uh, stormtroopers as well. All in a line there, ready to go. They do look good. That worked out pretty well. The, uh, the basing colors just really connect well with their uh, their uniforms. That desert yellow, the slightly, slightly lighter brown pants, that sort of thing. Worked out well. And yeah. 
mainly did that to shame Rick. <laughs> Who now knows he has to take his guys over the home over the uh, yeah over the weekend. Oh, well, home is I don't have home this weekend. I oh, have that's right. You're toy fair. You have the toy fair. Yeah. All my work is for naught. Yeah. <laughs> Which is okay because yeah. it just gives me because I actually have been setting up a decent paint station at home now. Great. So I can do some after hours painting. Excellent. Excellent. Because I also need to do it. I'm trying to, I put a post in one of the um, terrain building groups. Okay. Um, because I want to do a diorama. Yeah. Um, well, a couple actually. A sci-fi one, one for uh, fantasy. I'm like the Red Dragon Inn or right. the Rusty Dragon Inn. Yep. Um, but I want to do a full diorama so that you know, once we get done painting some of these miniatures, we can put them in a cool diorama that's thematic. Right. To them, and uh, take some shots. Take some shots. So the way that they look good. good. Yeah. Yep. So I, it, I it put a picture up of what I kind of want to go for yeah. in one of the, like I said, train building groups and uh, of a tavern. And people have just been, like, blowing it up with some good uh, good intel. Excellent. Because uh, I want it to look like a Skyrim tavern. Okay. And, uh, you know, so they're like, get coffee stirred, use foam, glue the coffee stirs onto the foam right. to get a... Um, wooden wall yeah the wooden wall wooden and walls. floorboards look yep. so I'm gonna have to go purchase these things and I think <laughs> coffee stirs are at like what staples of, uh, of all places you can probably find them at staples you can, I bet you can find some at uh, or something similar at uh, Michael's or at uh, Starbucks Starbucks just yeah. take them Yep. Don't pay for nothing. Just take the stirs for free. A venti vanilla latte, please. And a venti. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta have the good stuff too. <laughs> and fifty stirs. Fifty stirs. Yeah. Every trip, take a couple trips. I like to. I like to add my sugar gradated levels. Right. <laughs> so that by the time you get to the bottom, it's just caramel. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> So today, who's all going to watch Black Panther tonight? Oh, is it open? Okay. Nice. I don't think I'm going. No. Until next week. Oh, because of it's a toy. Going today. to Toy Fair, and then also, you know, I don't want to go and watch it and not have you know take Crystal. Right. Because she'd kill me. So. And you know, Rick don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys got some good stuff lined up for Toy Fair? Well, uh, I, we have some interviews that we're going to yeah. be doing with uh, different toy publishers. And then we also have um, uh, some... In, I have, like, one interview right now with one game publisher. Okay. And that'll be with uh, Renegade Game Studios. And then... Because uh, I feel like I want I want to hold off on doing a lot of interviews right. on that side until Gamma. Right, okay. I you know, don't want everybody to talk about what they're going to talk about at Toy Fair, and then when you get to Canada, uh, they're like, oh, you already talked about everything. Hmm? Right. All right. That makes sense. <clears throat> Is there something you're ex you're hoping to see? What's your... Uh... Uh, like I said, I'm really excited to see, hopefully be able to get in and see what uh, Hasbro has yeah, yeah. for Star Wars. And also what Koto Bakia has, because uh, they always have really cool Star Wars stuff too. Right. Um, there's another company called Beast Kingdom or Egg Attack, who make these like chibi looking Star Wars uh, okay. statues. And uh, I don't know if you guys realize this, but even when I'm not painting Star Wars, I do enjoy pretty much all toys that yeah. are in the Star Wars theme. All Star Wars toys. Yeah, it's. It's the jam. Cool. 
Excellent. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, but I don't even know what any of the other toy companies might even be bringing to the table up there this right. weekend. So, who knows? That all be a surprise. Yeah, or you know, in the game companies and everybody, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, to say the least. Cool. <clears throat> but Johnny and I are actually really hoping that B and H Photo will be open while we're there. Okay. So we can go in and check <laughs> it out. I've been to New York for Comic Con and Toy Fair yep. many times over the last few years, and it's never open. All right. It's usually some sort of holiday. Right. So. Fingers crossed. Will they be closed for uh, President's Day? Uh, don't say that. <laughs> Too late. Odds are yes. Too late. Well, that's the day we come back anyway. Yeah. But I mean, they might have a, like a the whole President's weekend. Day weekend where they're all. <laughs> no. You say I, no. I shouldn't jinx it? Silence yeah, that talk. That's literally what you're doing. You're jinxing it. How about that. I give him a call right now? No. <laughs> Mr. B and H? You need to be closed. Why is that? I have a friend who really wants to see your star. Oh, Rick. Yes, we know. <laughs> Closed. Closed. Have you ever actually gone into the store? No. Oh, my goodness. I've been a window shopper for four years now. It's like, I feel like I have to go up there on my own, take the Megabus, spend a day, and just go to B&H. You know? Should we explain to people what B&H no, is? No, I was just going to say, <laughs> it's not like the A&P, it's not like a grocery store. No. Nor is it a, to- a toy store. Well, it's, it's toys, yeah. it's, 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 toys, yeah. toys of a different nature, yeah. Toys, yeah. <laughs> it's all f- camera and video gear. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, if you go online to bnh.com, you, you can see what we're talking about. It's, oh, it's heaven for a photographer or videographer or anybody like into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which yup, I am. Excellent. I'm also looking forward to going up to like Midtown Comics too. <laughs> yeah, you, you went there during New York Comic Con last yeah. year. Love that store. Yeah, it's amazing. Should probably shoot some footage while we're there at Midtown just because, you know, we do have to make a comic book store commercial. Right. You should totally do that. Did I tell you about that yet, Johnny? You did not. (laughs) Kind of didn't want to get y'all flustered on another project. Are you guys having a meeting right now? No. Nope. Are you having a meeting? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. How are your... Uh, My troopers? Troopers coming along. I mean, I think he's all right. Oh. So. Yep. Coming along there. It's funny when you do a correction on here from the black. Yeah. And you hit it, you know, you're doing the correction to straighten that line out with the white. You get that little bit of a gray shadow. It's all right. Right. (laughs) Oh, underneath? Yeah. It's not upsetting. That's where you do a couple of thin coats. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All good. But, uh,. Uh, one of the things that we talked about in the, the show last week was favorite Stormtrooper moments. Oh. Last week, you mean like an hour ago? Yeah. I talked about it last week. You saw it an hour ago. <laughs> well, actually, you saw it last week and an hour ago. <laughs> um, yeah. So, do you have a favorite Stormtrooper moment? Uh, oddly, I do. Yeah. In the, when I say oddly, is that it's not from any of the original series right. stuff. Um, it's from Force Awakens. Okay. In the moment when. Okay. In the moment when uh, Kylo is just freaking out in his space, and the yep. two stormtroopers come around the corner, and they're like, All "Right." And then they turn their right back around and like, right. "Nope." <laughs> and I was like, "Nice." 
which is kind of a cool humanizing yep. moment because, you know, they are just soldiers yep. as far as stormtroopers are concerned. That's yep. how I look at them. Right. They're just soldiers. They're not the evil that is the Empire, They're, but they are part of what is considered the evil Empire. Yep. But they're just soldiers being told what to do. They probably joined the, the uh, Empire because they paid okay, can feed their family, take care of, <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. All the good stuff there. But well, there's, a, there's a thing in, uh, I think, Force Awakens where it talks about, like, Finn was raised from a child to be mm -hmm. a stormtrooper. Yeah. And a janitor. And a janitor. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, there's always a trash compactor. <laughs> I think the Finn as a character legitimized the human side of the stormtroopers because up until that point, yep. you know, after a New Hope, or, I mean, I'm sorry, no, the, uh, the prequel trilogies, it had been established yeah. that they were all clones. So this is like right. really the first time you get to see a stormtrooper with his helmet off. Right. Aside, well, from, like, aside from the animated series and whatnot. Right. Actually, yeah, I, did, I guess there's been a discussion about that <coughs> in the some of the chat. One of my, uh, I saw one of my friends, their pals, talk about uh, the stormtroopers themselves not being clones. I mean, the, right. The clone troopers were clones, obviously, but but the uh, stormtroopers in the original trilogy were conscripts. Oh. So, I'm not sure about that. Huh. But, so if David wants to jump back in the chat and, and exactly what's going validate on that. Yeah. But, uh, Carl's with us. Carl's joined us now. He's hey, in Carl. the chat. His favorite Stormtroop mo uh, moment was from Spaceballs. <laughs> uh, he goes, we ain't found beep. He goes, yeah. that's stormtroopers, right? Yeah. <laughs> is that when they come the desert? Yeah, I was gonna say, is that when they're coming the desert? <laughs> Look, droids. <laughs> Carl says he's looking forward to Black Panther, but he doesn't like seeing things opening the weekend. I can I can understand that. I I do like seeing things open the weekend because then I can run right back to the camera right here. And spoil everything. Yeah. Because, you know, I support spoiler culture. You're terrible. <laughs> I just remembered a funny story that I should save until we're working on the Jedi. Okay. Or the Jedi and the Sith. Okay. <laughs> oh, adjusting my camera. Yeah. All right. Oh. I don't know where I don't know where my hands should be. There we go. Ah. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So it's just a matter of I didn't look up to check my hands were in the shop. Well, you're paying attention to your painting, so yeah, I was. Something I wish Rick would do. Oh, oh, oh. damn! Dun, dun. Sorry. Um, you need some salve for that sick bird? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm good. But uh, no, I've got a, a funny story about. <clears throat> uh, Jedi mind tricks. Okay. Yeah. That I'll save until next week. Until Jedi time? Until Jedi time. All right. That's actually what I'll do next week, Thursday, when Jeff yeah. is here. Yeah. Painting with you and doing the light effects stuff. Yep. I will work on finishing my troopers. Oh, cool. In another room. No. While I maintain the chat. Oh, okay. And shares and such. Yeah, you've been here to read the chat to us. We'll set up a little table off to the side. Yeah, yeah. and you can come over to me every once in a while and watch me <laughs> struggle. No. On my struggle bus. <laughs> struggle bus? Mm-hmm. When did that pull up? Uh, the minute I started painting. Okay. <laughs> You're doing fine. Doing fine. He says that on camera, that uh, when we're off camera, uh, he abuses me. I do not <laughs> abuse you. I only abuse you on camera, actually. It's more funny that way. That's true. Oh, okay. And how about that? You know who I haven't seen in the chat today? Who? Is uh, Kurt. Kurt? Yeah. You know, your predecessor. That. That guy. Yeah, that guy. Okay. That traitor. <laughs> Is 
a terrible thing to say. Just you want to direct the ball. Yeah. What? <laughs> How dare I introduce him to a potential employer? <laughs> Good job. Good job. Okay. So now that my next three stone troopers are done. Dang it. Oh, look at this. I'm almost out. There we go. I love the when the paint scorches out. What's that? Okay. So we'll zoom in and have a look at now. Um, I'm just going to in front of this here. So from that front, um, and there we go, oh, <coughs> back here. Uh, so that's the rebel squad leader. Uh, for, on the base, we'll just go through and uh, paint the bases on the storm tro or some of the stormtroopers now. Um, I painted some de uh, Vallejo Desert Yellow, which is the color I've sort of put out on my palette here. Uh, and I'll paint that over the, all of the, uh, the sort of the sand on their bases. Uh, we'll come back and dry brush that with some uh, pale sand and then some ivory. That final one there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Whoop. Zoom back and forth. It's like an episode of uh, Days of Our Lives, I think. I'm glad you laughed at that. Uh, and then uh, we'll put I some... I wasn't going to. That's fair enough. <laughs> but... What? Yeah, you just had that laugh... Just bottled up. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, then we'll finish up with some beige brown around the edges. So pretty uh, straightforward stuff. I'm just going to thin the... The herd? The herd. <laughs> yes, I'll be thinning the herd soon. Nice. Uh, thin down the uh, desert yellow a little bit. Uh, and with a sort of larger old brush. Uh, it's a bit rough around the edges. Just uh, slap that around on the, the bait. Nice. Sometimes, uh, I, some people like to paint the miniatures separate from the bases. Okay. Uh, because it can be sort of a lot faster to paint up, paint them up separately. Uh, if you're looking to get, uh, looking to have or keep your uh, miniature very clean, mm -hmm. uh, painting them separately can be a good idea. But when you bring them together, uh, what you might end up with is you'll have a stormtrooper standing on top of sand mm -hmm. and not going into the into sand, sand at all. Okay. At all. It's like just floating on top. Gives it a little bit of an unnatural look. Unnatural kind of feel. And usually yeah. because the sand is irregular, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be sitting on the, the highest points of the sand. So you'll have little gaps underneath, which you don't have. So right. I'm a big fan of the um, sort of basing them, or well, putting the basing material on before I start painting and make sure it, you know, it's up around their, okay. their feet. It looks like their feet are actually sinking into the, the ground underneath. Unless, of course, they're on like metal decking or... Right. Wooden floorboards and things like that. But, uh, but no, when it's a natural terrain. When it's natural terrain, yeah, when it's when it's sand or, or dirt or mud or right. that sort of thing. Or water. Water, yeah. That's also one other one of my favorite stormtrooper moments or shore trooper yeah. is when they're walking uh, in Rogue One, yep. walking through down the beach in the water. Man, that was such a cool look. Yeah. On. I, uh, I took a few photos of uh, the way that I, the way that I put the sand on the bases for these for okay. the models, uh, and I meant to send them to Johnny so we could we could include them in the uh, show today, but I forgot. Oh no! I know I'm terrible. <laughs> uh, so what I'll do is I'll post them up in the uh, painting happy little minis Facebook group. Okay. Uh, so we can check those out uh, in the booklet. Uh, the sort of getting started booklet for Star Wars Legion. It does show you, sort of the back, it shows you an example of how to do that, which is uh, just using some PVA glue. 
okay. or uh, white glue, Elmer's glue, that kind of thing. Um, use an old paintbrush to spread it around on the base and then dip it into some sand, just some regular old play sand or something like that. Okay. Do you ever just go outside and just grab regular dirt? Uh, I have on occasion uh, done that because you usually get a lot of variety in size okay. and that. But uh, what you need to do if you're doing that is dry it out first before you use it. Yeah, you mentioned like actually cooking it to, yeah, to yeah. get rid of any bacteria that might. So just uh, turn on your oven and don't put it up too high, but just uh, spread it out, sort of a very thin layer over a cookie sheet and dry it out is the way to go. I can dig it. So. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Dave. Have you sure. ever done the uh, cracked, dry, dirt, earth kind of look before? Do you know how to do that? Um, there, I, I've done it sort of a couple of times. Uh, there are a few different ways to do that, uh, but Games Workshop, actually. Uh, Citadel do a, uh, a couple of different paints that are basically formulated to crack. So you paint them on really, really thick onto the bases and just put them aside and let them dry for like 24 hours and you'll get great cracks and that cracked earth kind of look, uh, sort of like um, dry lake beds, that kind of feel. Nice. So there are paints out there that where you don't actually have to do really any work. <laughs> I'm a big fan of those. <laughs> Uh, Walter says, when it's silent and they're painting, I can feel the force thro flow through them. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of flows through me and sort of stops there. It stops right, right about there. No, no, it stops in you. Oh, it stops in me? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't even quite reach. <laughs> it doesn't continue to his fingers and onto the paint. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Never, never does that. You're just storing it up, that's all. <clears throat> Just imagine Rick force choking somebody. Nope. Oh. Nah, I'm not really a force trick kind of guy. I'm more of a do it. <laughs> oh, a like a compelling. A compel, yeah. I do more of a yeah intimidate, compel type situation. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Right. Oh. As I grab them by the throat, and the droids are standing <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, oh no. This aside, never speak to it again. What happened? Nothing. Nothing. Oh no! Something exciting. Well, the great thing is that this miniature was finished sort of before, so mm -hmm. uh, all the, the paint was dry, and because it's acrylic, it's essentially like a plastic. Okay. Yeah, I can spend a little bit of time drying this off, and we can focus on what Rick's doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go back and watch that. Don't. Don't. It's terrible. Terrible. Is that one of Drew's? It is. <laughs> Shh. Don't tell him. At about 42 minutes in. <laughs> Here's your time marker. Oh. Right. Perfect. I just ruined everything. How it really is. Just a minute. She can go back and... Corrections. Just... What's that line from Solo? It's fine. We're, everything's we're, fine. We're fine. <laughs> everything's fine. Nothing. <laughs> Thanks. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Who is this? Well, that's the line from uh, the New Hope, New Hope. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought I'd be clever there, and just because uh, I've got a little bit of extra paint, and I'll mm -hmm. and base as many as I can. But way too clever for my own good. Actually, uh, Johnny, what, just while we're there, can you grab the finished um, trooper from up there? Uh, up, up on top. Up on top. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Yep. yep. Which one? Uh, there's one with silver on the gun barrels. That's it. Excellent. Oh. Almost, almost round two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, what I've been doing there is thinning down the paint to put over the, the white um, undercoat. So now, not so much thinned down. A little bit thicker to go over the black on the basing here. 
So uh, Ed in the chat is asking, what is this miniature holder I'm using? It's the uh, workshop uh, holder. You can get it at your friendly local game store for about eight dollars. Yep. Eight dollars plus tax. Plus tax. Yep. And at that price, buy three. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, your local store will be uh, very happy. Yeah. But, uh, there we go. Yeah, I'm like, and I apologize. I'm you know, being quiet here because I almost never get a miniature done <laughs> <laughs> during a broadcast, and I figured, I mean, come on, it's just white and black yeah. and some grayscaling. Imagine you can do it, but. Uh, yeah, I can't. Nah, <laughs> but that's okay. What are you talking about? I'm getting... Now you got those two. two. Right. Ish. Okay, so we can see there, that's the desert yellow painted over the black and over the white. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. There we go. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> so looking pretty, uh, pretty similar in, yeah. uh, in tone, so that's what we want. We want all the basing to look the same, regardless of, of where they... Started from, uh, and yeah. So, so I still need to leave those dry for a, a little bit. Uh, but what I'll talk about now are these nifty things. Yes, the tufts. <laughs> the tufts. Check them out. They're very cool. Just waiting to zoom in there. So the Battlefields XP uh, tufts from Army Painter are uh, super cool. We got hold of the, uh, I'll hold them under there, I think here, the Wasteland Tufts, which are kind of a, kind of a dry, cool, dry grass kind of look. Uh, I don't think you can see those. Close. There we go. Uh, so a longer, grass tuft uh, in with some very short, some sort of two millimeter dark grass in there. So I like those, so we went for those with our uh, sort of sci-fi yeah. setting. And but we also grabbed, just in case, some of the the mountain tufts, which again sort of look like some uh, sort of windswept dried grass tufts that you'd see on the side of a mountain. Something very cool, and the other ones that we picked up were what are they called? I can't remember what they're called. Scrublands? Scrublands? Is it? Was it scrub? Scrub? Uh, Fine. Oh, yeah. Lowland shrubs. Ah. Uh. What these are. And these ones are cool. I guess as well as being that, uh, it's like that six mil, four mil, six mil um, static grass, those central tufts. They've had some other uh, some material glued on top. So they look like little shrubs, yeah. which is very cool. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so depending on the type of uh, look, you look uh, you're going for on your basing, you can uh, pick a variety of different ones. There's quite a few more. I think there's another six or seven from the Army Painter range. There, yeah, there was a, a lot more when I was looking up which ones to get. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, but each one of these can give you a completely different look on your bases. But they're super easy to use. Uh, so I'm going to grab the uh, uh, sort of commander here. There we go. So you can see we've already got a wasteland tough there. I'm going to grab another one, just peel one off the, the sheet. If you have a, a pair of tweezers, it's sort of super handy to use tweezers for this. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of... Actually, I'm not going to put him on the commander. I noticed I've already got two tufts on there, so I'm going to have to it. Yep. Yeah, it's good. There we go. Uh, just on this open spot here. And we just pop that straight on. Oh. Mi uh, Mini Painting Studios says uh, mountain tufts are my go tos. Yep, they are good. There we go. And that is how easy that is. 
these things like that dry. Very cool. Super so, simple and fast. And it adds so much depth to your model. Yeah. And character that and character that you know. Even I, it could be one of the ones I painted. Yeah, add one of those. So it, <laughs> it, it will automatically elevate. It will. It will elevate that model. So. Yeah. The. Uh, it's kind of a, a funny thing. I've been painting miniatures a long time. Now it feels like forever. Forever. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree. No, it's like twenty. Was it twenty-seven years? Yeah. It's forever. No, Queen would say it's that's not it's forever. It's been a drop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how long has she been Queen? <laughs> 75, 78 years, something. Yeah. Ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, when I originally started painting, uh, the <clears throat> standard was paint the base green. Okay. And then glue, uh, like, a granulated cork flock, a green granulated cork flock on there. Okay. And that was it. That was it. That was it, yep. There was no depth. There was just a little bit of texture. There was no additional depth. And then something came out with this whole... Uh, static. But I've seen that where they like throw it on there and it just kind of like. Zzz. Right, the static, uh, there's static grass guns. Yeah. Um, where you can shoot static grass on. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, static grass, I started painting, static grass wasn't a big thing in miniature painting. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was kind of interesting to. Yeah, I was like, what was that? that? Um, but no, one of the things I was going to say is that when I was working for, for Gay's Workshop and running yeah. a store, Everything we did, everything we put into, the, we painted and put into the cabinet, had to have that basing scheme. Really? Didn't matter what it was, where it was from. Wow! Even and though it was maybe outdated by even then. Well, it wasn't really outdated by then. I was ninety-five. Okay. So it was a while ago. But uh, yeah, I remember having a conversation with uh, with one of my friends about it when Necromunda was released, mm -hmm. which was a game set in the the bottom. The, the underhive yeah. of this enormous monolithic city. Yet we had to paint them with green bases, with the green granulated cork flock uh. on top. And he was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that in my store. I said, well, you have to. And he goes, no, it's dumb, because that would grass doesn't grow down there. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but. Uh, so he didn't do it, and everyone was like, wow, they look great, Grant. That's fantastic. We right. should all do our stuff like that. He and was so the trendsetter. He was the trendsetter. He was the he changed the policy. Wow. So uh, yeah. So from him. from there, it's been like, oh yeah, I'll experiment with different things, and nice different stuff. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I kind of usually at the point now where uh, I try to have two or three different textures okay. on the base. Uh, so these ones here have really have two textures: the the sand and the grass. The tufts right. of grass. Um, if you wanted to, you could say that there were three because you've got the dark brown patches of grass and the, the taller, lighter grass. Right. Um, that might be stretching it a little bit, but yeah, okay. sounds right. But yeah, throwing in a, in a different style of sort of grass flock would be would be fine. That would be your third texture. Um, putting a skull on there. A skull. A skull or some barbed wire or. Okay. Any sort of any, anything like else. Like a crate dragon skull? That uh, would be cool. Yep, dragon skull. The crate dragon from Star Wars? It's an actual oh, creature. Is, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, is it in uh, one of those shows that I haven't watched? It was in the role playing game. Okay. And then it's been on other also video games. It's been one of those games I haven't played. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a new hope. <laughs> yeah, the big dragon skeleton. When C3PO and R2D2 are going through the desert before they get captured oh, by the right. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. a big skeleton thing out in the desert. That's yeah, that's a great dragon. So you didn't want to stop that. You just wanted to go straight to the RPG. Yeah, straight to the, <laughs> yeah, the gaming, because, you know, games. Sure, sure. I understand. And I fought him on uh, Star Wars Commander, the phone app. Oh, okay. <laughs> you and your phone apps. <laughs> I have two phone apps. Mm -hmm. Yep. Both of them are Star Wars. All right, okay. <laughs> But, Star uh, Wars Commander and Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Yep. <laughs> nice. I mean, that's something you can certainly do for uh, for the stormtroopers or or some of the larger things. So like a, an ATST, right? With uh, like stepping over a skeleton. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And that would be perfect for the Tatooine. Yeah. Um, it could be a, like a piece of uh, bantha horn. Oh yeah, that'd be or, or even a bantha track. 
um, all day. They kind of like I mean, sketch it in and, and do an elevated. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd yep. be cool. There's all sorts of things you could do. Just to add a little bit of different, uh, different texture. Um, adds depth. Fortunately, I haven't been able to get a couple of these to dry in time. So let's get some of the hotel. Off. So that's with the the pale sand on the bases there. You can see that there, Johnny. Yeah, do an overhead shot. So looks pretty cool. I'm gonna hit it with some uh, Vallejo ivory, which is really pale, uh, almost white, but not not too white. As you can see, just really quick to, to brush on. Is there a mini for a dewback? Not as of yet, Walter. It will be awesome when there is. And I'm yeah, I, I I I can foresee them doing dewbacks and other yep. other creatures. It'd be an odd one though, because it's <clears throat> it's a pretty slow moving creature. Oh yeah. So they'd have to do it with a uh, with some sort of heavy weapon on it. I think. Hmm. Otherwise, it's yeah, it's almost it's a really hindrance. In, it is, yeah. Unless it was a scenario-based thing, I guess you could probably do it that way. Yeah, where the dewbacks are. Well, I don't know. The dewbacks might have a higher like armor class, I guess. Yeah. Or de armor de uh, defensive. Because I know in a lot of like again role playing games or video games that incorporate them yep. as a option, uh, they're really good at knocking down barricades. Okay. Yeah. So you know they hit with their their head and smash things. Yeah. So if if in this game they were to make dewbacks, I could see them being the like the cavalry or the forward cavalry that would smash through the barricades that come you know they come like with a, this game the siege breaker kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. That could work. All right. Well, we've only got about three minutes left. No. I know. So in that three minutes, I would like to bring up a little known fact. March 1st <gasps> will be our 100th episode oh, wow. of Painting Happy Little Minis. Just so kinda. that's a pretty big deal, I think. It is. Um, I'm impressed. I know, right? And then uh, I feel like maybe, again, once we get off camera talk about maybe do something on the 100th episode. We'll still be painting Star Wars. Yep. Doesn't mean we can't incorporate a little more fun into that episode. Not that Star Wars isn't fun, because it's freaking amazing. Yep. Agreed. So, March 1st, put that on your all's calendar, the 100th episode. And uh, we'll see what we can do to make it a little bit more bang for our, for your uh, internet buck. <laughs> My thought is trying to get a couple people to join us. You know, maybe we can get Terry to oh, join us via yep. uh, like a Skype, kind of like when we did the Matt Merth Mercer interview. You know, excellent. bring him in, bring her in, and she can uh, talk about what she's painting and uh, get Josh from Mini Painting Studios, kind of do the same thing yep. with him. Have like uh, like everybody in at once, or uh, we'll like a, we had to like rotate through them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think we have that ability to bring them all in on the all right okay. on at the same time, but we can definitely set them up to come in. You know, give them each a few minutes to talk about miniature painting, what got them into painting miniatures, and right. you know um, what they do in the hobby, and you know what's their signature move. You know. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so... German suplex. The German suplex. Yep. So, yeah, the 100th episode, March 1st. So, you know, again, Excellent. like I said, put that on your calendars. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So, go to your Here local game store. 
Yep. Become part of the gaming community there. Check out their paints. Uh, you can find Army Painter War Paints there, uh, the Citadel Paints, Vallejo, Vallejo obviously. Um, and if they aren't carrying them, ask them to order them if it's a paint you want to try out. Because you never know uh, which paint is going to be the one for you. As, but as you can tell with like... Don't touch the bottoms. There we go. As, uh, <laughs> like oh, with bad. Dave, he <laughs> uses a wide variety of brands yep. to mm-hmm. get the effects that he's looking for. So... <clears throat> the Rebels of that way. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> we got him. The Rebels have not infiltrated our ranks. <laughs> I mean, have you ever put on a Stormtrooper helmet? No. It's ridiculous. Right. You okay. can't see out of them. <laughs> and I guess, you know, that could actually account for their inability to actually hit anything. Yeah. Um, for sure. But sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, you're good. You're um, good. Okay. So, uh, stores, I think, are taking pre orders now for. They are. Uh, Star Wars Legion. Um, loads of stuff coming in the first wave. Loads of stuff. Uh, and someone's going to win them all. I know, it's going to be crazy. We're giving away all the uh, Star Wars Legion uh, miniatures that we're painting here. Yep. Someone's going to win it. So uh, make sure you check out that Gleam uh, campaign that we have on our Facebook page for yep. Game Trade Media and also in the Painting Happy Little Minis group. It's there as well. Uh, if you're not a part of that group, request to join. We'll add you in. We sure will. Yeah. Rick and I have a, a race each time. He's we're been to... kicking, you've been kicking my butt recently. I have. Uh, I have. I'm, I'm like five to one, I think. Yeah, it's ridiculous right now. Uh, yep, keep signing up, keep joining. Uh, come and talk to us, talk to the group, uh, show us the cool minis you're painting. Uh, and yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. We oh. appreciate all of you that do join us and be, uh, uh, let us be a part of your community in, in hobby gaming and painting and all, all the weird stuff we talk about. Talking BS online. Yeah, oh. all the weird stuff. Uh, and uh, we are glad that you're part of our community. And in that, I have been Rick. I've been Dave. This is Painting Happy Little Minis, and we will see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.